What's going on guys and welcome back to this week's bourbon of the week. This one we have a special for you today. This is high gold from rabbit hole. This is a great bourbon. Can't find it here in Pennsylvania. I can tell you right now I'm glad I have a couple of friends out there that can help me get my hands on these types of things. But everybody knows before we get started on all of that, time for the traditional sip. It's going to do good. So here we have High Gold by Rabbit Hole. This is a 95 proof bourbon. This comes in at 70% corn, 25% malted rye, and 5% malted barley. So this is a high rye mash bill. This is non-chill filtered, and it says at least three years old on the back. It says matured over three years in New American Chard Oak. So it's probably right around that three year mark. Rabbit Hole actually does distill their own product, but they are basically leasing out the space to do it. They're using somebody else's distillery, somebody else's um, machines and everything like that, but they are making their own product. And as of 2018, I believe, they started making their own product in their own distillery in Louisville, Kentucky. So hopefully if they're using, I guess, that three-year mark, we should be coming up on when they're putting out their own product into these bottles, and we'll know about that soon enough. But this one is the High Rye Mash Bill, 70% corn, 25% rye, 5% malted barley, three years old, 95 proof. So that's what we're working with. The owner calls it rabbit hole because basically when his wife got him involved in whiskey and they moved to Louisville, Kentucky, he found himself going down in a rabbit hole of whiskey and that's when they came out with rabbit hole. He said without her, he would have never gotten into whiskey and never started making his own bourbons. They have three bourbons and then a rye as well, I believe is what they have. I have two of them, the Derringer, the High, High Gold, and the Cave Hill, I believe is the third, and then they have a rye whiskey as well, I think. I think that's all they have right now. So this is coming in at 95 proof. Like I said, let's skip all that. Let's get right into drinkability on this. Drinkability is good. Smooth, easy sipping. The sweetness on it is very good at the beginning, which I think hides some of that high rye at the end. So you really don't get that too much of an ethanol kick. Definitely drinks under the 95 proof. I wouldn't say it drinks too much under it. If you ask me, I would probably say it's right around 90 to 95. So not a bad spot for it. I think that it can be a little bit better, but at the same time, I'm not going to hate it for drinking at 95 proof if it is a 95 proof, or especially if you think it's a little bit under 95. That's why you don't spin your Glenclarens too fast. See that? Anyway, 95 proof drinkability. I think it's great. For drinkability, if you don't know, basically we're talking about how easy it is to sip, how smooth it is, how much of an ethanol kick are we getting with this. With a 95 proof bourbon like this, you expect to get a little bit of an ethanol kick. With a high rye with 25% rye, you get a little bit of spice on this, absolutely. But for the actual ethanol alcohol kick that you get with this, it's not too bad. I'm going to give this like an 8.7 when it comes to drinkability. I think that's where it belongs. So taste on this, which is what we get into next, is where things get a little bit interesting on this. Now they say right on here that this is, where does it say it? It says, aged in handcrafted casks by Kelvin Cooperage. So basically what they do with these casks at Kelvin Cooperage is they toast them first. Now, if you know anything about a toasted barrel, basically they slowly burn the inside. They don't char it. They slowly burn the inside. And for this process, this can take up to 20 minutes. Some plate, some people just toast it or just char their barrels. It'll take 10, 15, 20 seconds, depending on how deep they want that char. They toast these barrels for 20 minutes before they put the char on there. And what that does is it brings all the sugars out. Everything in that wood, it's going to bring all those sugars to the front of that wood. So when you put this whiskey in it, it's going to get a very complex, very deep flavor profile. And that's what you get with this. You get complex, you get deep, you get very good vanilla, very good caramel, burnt toast, butterscotch, all these flavors working out, the sweetness at the beginning, the high rye at the end, very oaky as well. For a three-year-old bourbon, I think that process allows more of that oak flavor to get infused in this because not many three-year-old bourbons that I know really have this oak flavor that this gets out of this. And you guys know already, I'm not the biggest oak fan, but for this one, I don't hate it at all. I like this a lot. I think it's just subtle enough that it's delicious and it's not too overpowering where the oak is just like the only flavor that you're going to get on this. This is a roller coaster ride. When you drink this, you're getting so many different flavors. Like I said, butterscotch, vanilla, caramel, burnt toast, oak, all of these flavors. And that's before the rye kick even kicks in and you're getting that pepper, all of those flavors as well. So I, I didn't expect this. When you drink, when you talk about three-year-old bourbons, you talk about younger bourbons, you really don't get too many that you love, at least my, myself personally. Again, we're kind of in that craft age range where you're talking about a three-year-old bourbon, we're talking about the wiggles that are, you know, two years we did the Bloody Butcher, which was only nine months. So for this coming in at three years old, getting all these amazing flavor profiles in it, how in-depth they are, how powerful they are, it's very impressive to me. I'm going to give this, 
let me pause. It's not my favorite taste. Nothing about it is bad. All the flavors are there. They're prevalent. They're powerful. But it's different, okay? So when you're talking about strictly bourbon, if you're talking about your traditional buffalo trace taste or your traditional wild turkey taste where it's just straight bourbon, you know what you're going to get, that's not this. This is more complex. It's more different. It's more unique. It's not bad by any means, but it's definitely different from a bourbon, traditional bourbon flavor standpoint. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. But I'm still going to give this a great score on taste because I really do think that you should taste this. I'm going to give it like an 8.5 when it comes to taste on this. I think a few of the flavors stand out so well that it, it excites you. And every time you take a sip, you get something new. So we're going to give it an 8.5 when it comes to taste. So last but not least, we're going to talk about price on this. And that's where this bottle is going to struggle the most. This is a $70 bottle of bourbon. So that's going to put us in that premium bourbon market. We're starting to compete. I mean, Blanton's at $60. Joseph Magnus at $85. We're talking about Widow Jane at $70 as well. So we're starting to compete with some big names and some good products. Do I think this deserves to be $70? Let's talk about it. 25% uh, malted rye. We know that rye costs more than corn. So rye is going to price that up a little bit more. Two, they're obviously renting out or using somebody's distillery to make this product. So they have overhead there. They have to pay that company to make sure that they can use their product and get it out. Three, they're going that extra mile to toast the barrel. That 20 minute toast is going to take time. Time makes money. So we know we're getting an extra quality product because of that and it's giving us those flavors that we already talked about and we already love. Those three things, it is only a three year old bourbon so I don't understand, you can't say that it's a, you know sitting in a barrel for 15 years and half of it evaporated. But those other three things are why this bottle is gonna be $70. Do I think it deserves to quite be $70? Probably not. I think it's definitely priced a little bit higher, but I also know because they're trying to open their own distillery and do their own startup with their own product in their own location, they're probably trying to make some money now so that eventually they can put out a four, five, six-year-old bottle that's 100% their own from their own location in Louisville, Kentucky. So I can't knock them for that. They're a newer distillery, and that's what we want in this competition. We want newer distilleries to open up all the time because that's going to, one, keep supply up, which is going to keep demand down, supply up demand down. Correct. That's how economics works, which means all these other bottles aren't just going to be able to price gouge you. But $70 is a lot to ask. I understand that if it was sitting on the shelves and I knew nothing about it, I might pass on it at $70. Having it now, I would probably pick up another bottle at $70, although I would obviously love this a lot more in that $50 range maximum. So for $70, I'm going to give this as a score for price. Let's give it like a, this one's tough because it's good. The drinkability there is the taste is there just not quite there as far as $70 goes. I'm gonna give it like a 6.7 when it comes to price on this. So listen, while I add these scores up, let's send it over to this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week and learn a little bit about High Gold and a little bit more about Rabbit Hole. Let's do this. So for this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week, we're going to talk about High Gold and how it got its start and how it got its name. It's actually named after a gentleman named Christian High Gold who immigrated from Germany in the 1850s. He moved into the Kentucky area and he used his stoneworking craftsmanship to actually make some beautiful things, including his mansion, which still stands after 175 years of flooding and all other kinds of weather, still stands the facade today and has some amazing pictures, sculptures, I should say, of his family, American heroes, some presidents on there as well, and tells an amazing story behind the American journey at the time as an immigrant. So Rabbit Hole actually created this product and named it after High Gold because they wanted to, and I quote, connect nature, spontaneity, and imagination to create works of art to inspire others. And that's exactly what they're doing here. And that's what every whiskey distillery is doing. Every bourbon distillery these days, they're creating a work of art. This isn't just one person throwing a bunch of ingredients together and pouring out a mash bill. This is a work of art and every one that you're drinking is going to be a little bit different, whether it's the warehouse that it's aged in or how deep the char is on the barrel. Everything makes this a little bit different every time you drink it. And I appreciate what Rabbit Hole is doing as a newer, younger distiller in the game because they are really upping the game and they're keeping it competitive when it comes to these smaller distilleries. And I want to see them succeed. So here's to you, Rabbit Hole. So here's to Christian High Gold and here's to Rabbit Hole. This one came in though at a 7.97, which is right around that eight mark. And I think that's a perfect spot for this. I When I first drank this, I was like, this is probably right around an eight. You know, it's not a seven, it's not average. It's definitely above average, 
but I knew that that $70 price tag was really going to hold this back. Again, once they start making their own product, once they start distilling under their own warehouse, their own stuff like that, they can really drop that price point for them. And maybe they do keep this at a premium whiskey, but maybe they give you a four or five or a six year old bottle with it. That way they can at least justify that when they're talking about the $70 price tag on this. But that's what we're going to get. High gold from Rabbit Hole, a great spot for it at 7.97. I wouldn't complain about that at all. For a three-year-old whiskey, there's not many that are up that high. Not many breaking the eights mark. And that's what we're going to get. 95 proof, 70% corn, 25. You already heard it here. But make sure you follow me on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m., we drop an image of the bourbon that we're going to review. You can go on and try and guess the score that you think I'm going to give it. If you guess the closest, I'll give you a shout out on the channel as well as enter you in a monthly drawing for some cool prizes here on the channel. Scroll down below. Check me out on Patreon. Check me out on Discord. Come chat with us. Tell me what you're sipping on tonight. Try yourself some high gold if you got it near you. But in the meantime, don't drink and drive. Drink responsibly. Stay healthy. Stay happy. Stay drinking. Cheers, y'all.